Hey everybody, it's Mr. Hohen again for a, another YouTube lesson. Uh, this will be the second lesson for the Perspectives on Race class. And uh, this part, this lecture that I'm going to be doing today focuses on uh, this, which will transition well into the Howard Zinn book chapter that I am going to ask you to read and answer some questions about, which then transitions into the longer assignment uh, for the uh, four-paragraph essay. So um, what we're going to talk about today in this lecture is this timeline that I have created. It's a timeline to understand white-black race relations in the United States over the course of literally 400 years. And uh, um, let's get started right away on that. Um, so. Our timeline, as you can see here, spans 400 years. It starts in 619 uh, and ends this year, 2020. Um, and there's, uh, I, of course, there's tons of history that happens over the course of this 400 years, but what we're focusing on specifically is um, significant events that relate to black and white race relations over the course of this 400 years, all right? So let's begin with 619, 1619. In 1619, the first African slave was sold on North American soil within the British colonies, specifically in Jamestown, uh, Virginia. And so it's important to mark this date because it's literally the first time that um, the slave, uh, that the um, that the enslavement of black Africans becomes a thing in what will be the United States. Um, for a period of about 65 years or so, slavery is not necessarily a big deal. Uh, it's not necessarily common. Uh, it's not profitable. Uh, it's not all that popular. Um, some black slaves did exist over this 1619 to 1676 period, but not a lot. In fact, the most popular form of, of uh, employment was something called indentured servitude. Indentured servitude is when you um, owe money to somebody, and in the case of this period of early uh, British settlements in the 13 colonies, what would happen is that... Um, Travelers would come across the ocean uh, from Great Britain, uh, typically, and they owe money to the person that loaned them um, the money to you know, make their journey, to get their life started. And then they have to work off their debt over the course of uh, X amount of years, whatever the deal was with their, um, the person that gave them the loan. Once they've paid the back that loan, um, they are removed from any debt and uh, their title of an indentured servant is removed. Um, all of that changes in 1676 with something called Bacon's Rebellion. Bacon's Rebellion was uh, a rebellion uh, that was formed amongst indentured servant to servants, white indentured servants, uh, and black slaves. Uh, black slaves and white indentured servants sort of joined up and uh, formed this uh, revolution. And the white people at that time freaked out, naturally, about this revolution. And they squashed the rebellion, and it became very, very clear um, for the uh, settlers at that time, the white um, people, that uh, this indentured servitude was m a bigger danger than um, they thought. And it's at this point in 1676 that indentured servitude starts to decline and slavery starts to increase, all right? So let's go up to our next point on the timeline, and that's going to be 1776. And of course, as all of you know, uh, that is when the United States forms as a nation as a result of the Declaration of Independence. Um, and of course, the immortal words of the Declaration um, which we always keep coming back to is all men are created equal. But of course, in 1776, that is not true. Um, black slaves uh, will never be considered equal, either by the founding fathers or for the most part, all of the people living in the United States at that time. In fact, the majority of the founding fathers, there are 56 signers to the Declaration of Independence, 
Um, I think 51 of the 56 were slave owners. So um, uh, this becomes a very sensitive issue uh, in the early days of the United States. How do you deal with slavery when so many people, um, including the Founding Fathers, um, have sanctioned and made it okay to own slaves? Um, the Constitution, uh, many de decades later, will actually uh, sanction slavery um, by way of including language about the Three-Fifths Compromise and the Fugitive Slave Laws, uh, which made it complicit for all white uh, citizens of the United States to turn in um, slaves to the local authorities. Um, about 24 years after the Declaration of Independence, uh, an invention happens that completely changes America, and specifically the issue of slavery, forever, and that is the invention of the cotton gin. In the early 1800s, the cotton gin makes it um, much more efficient uh, to uh, grow, harvest, and manufacture cotton. Uh, the South becomes the cotton capital of the world, uh, and as a result of this increased demand for cotton, what you're going to also see is an increased demand for black slaves who are going to be the ones that farm cotton to make not only the southern planters uh, rich, but also the northern bankers and the northern textile uh, workers, who of course are white, um, make the country a very, very wealthy place. So uh, as of 1800, slavery takes off like a firestorm. And over the course of the next mm, 65 years, or 60 years actually, um, slavery is going to increase dramatically until you get to the point of 1860, the beginning of the Civil War, where you have about 4 million slaves living in the United States. That will account for roughly 15 to 18 percent of the United States population will be made up of black slaves. But of course, the Civil War um, uh, proves to be the decisive moment when uh, the North defeats the South and forever abolishes slavery. And once slavery is abolished, you have a population of four million slaves that are now set free. But of course, what does freedom look like for a population of people who uh, for up to this point, for the better part of 250 years, um, had been enslaved and treated no better than sort of the pigs and cows uh, and livestock that were on most farms. Um, this a period immediately following the Civil War is a period of called Reconstruction, where the government tries to resolve much of the uh, issues surrounding what freedom looks like for black slaves at this time. They come up with the 13th Amendment, which abolishes slavery. They come up with the 14th Amendment, which basically uh, grants citizenship to those four million blacks. Um, and also institutes the concept of due process of law. Um, and then the 15th Amendment, which gives all black, uh, all men in the United States the right to vote, including freed black men. So um, from 1865 um, onwards, um, the United States is going to change in, in many, many radical ways. But I do want to remind you that this period that we're looking at here from 1619, where we started up to 1865, the end of the Civil War, constitutes 246 years of institutionalized slavery and racism. In other words, the institutions of society, government, businesses, uh, banking, all of the major institutions of, of our country um, had uh, sanctioned and endorsed and protected slavery at this time, and then also, of course, promoted the idea that blacks were inferior and whites were superior, which, of course, is the nature of racism. And things didn't get much better over the course of the next 100 years. Um, from 1865 all the way up to 1954, you have a period called Jim Crow. Uh, that is the common term that historians use for this period after the Civil War up until 1954. Over the course of this period of history, what you have is massive segregation, and not just in the South. You have segregation really taking place all over the United States as it continues to grow and add more states. Um, you had a series of black codes. These are regional laws that would sort of clearly discriminate. 
and separate blacks from white. You had the concept of separate but equal, and no picture better sort of defines separate than equal than this picture right here, which is uh, um, a picture of a public water fountain, where you see a black man drinking from a black water fountain, but of course, uh, right off to his left is a white water fountain. This separate but equal idea is that you can separate the races and provide equal services, but of course, equal is in the eyes of the beholder. In this case, in this in this case, you have a, a white water fountain that is um, much more um, clearly uh, defined. It's cleaner, uh, whereas you have the dirtier uh, water fountain for the black people, and that sort of sets the larger. Uh, example for society. You're going to provide similar services, but um, blacks will receive an inferior uh, treatment and inferior resources as opposed to the whites. And this takes place over, that, over the course of this approximately 90-year uh, period. Over the course of this period, you also have the Ku Klux Klan running rampant. And again, not just in the South. Uh, the Ku Klux Klan exists in almost every state in the United States over this period. Uh, you had lynchings uh, where uh, blacks could be strung up without receiving proper uh, a fair trial um, by the community. Um, lynchings became sort of a public event that were promoted for, hey, come on down to the lynching this Saturday and watch uh, um, black people get hung. Uh, this was a period of intense discrimination, intense violence an intense oppression against the back black uh, population of the United States. And again, I do want to remind you, it, it is not just the South. It probably happens at a greater proportion than the rest of the country, but uh, places including Connecticut uh, had uh, a lot of this behavior. So what you see then over the course of now 335 years is institutionalized racism where the institutions, government, business, uh, society in general, keep promoting this idea of blacks being inferior. So 335 years we're talking here. We're talking, if you want to consider each 25 years a generation, you're talking uh, about a dozen generations who have been uh, taught the idea that blacks are inferior, whites are superior. And this idea of racism is going to be prevalent across almost all institutions. But all of that changes in 1954. In 1954, uh, there was a Supreme Court case, probably the most important Supreme Court case uh, in the history of our country, which is the Brown versus Board of Ed uh, decision. And in the Brown versus Board of, Board of Ed decision, what the federal government determines is this idea of segregation of keeping blacks separated. This idea of separate but equal has no place in America. Uh, and it begins in education, uh, but then we'll quickly sort of uh, cross over into businesses uh, and banking, where the idea of segregation and discrimination uh, has no place in America. And it begins with the Brown versus Board of Ed decision in 1954. What happens soon after? is the institution of the civil rights movement, where you begin to see people like Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X and all of the major leaders of the civil rights movement begin to vocalize their um, anger over these years of institutionalized racism. Uh, and um, they begin to uh, fight for more legal protections, which of course results in the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Act, the Voting Act of the early 1860s, I mean the 1960s. You also begin to see the rise of black power, where black people begin to develop a greater sense of pride about being black, and um, also frustration about the fact that the change to more equality uh, is not happening fast enough. All right. So this period of 1954 to 1968 is very, very important. Uh, and it really begins to uh, become this moment of significant social change in the way we recognize race relations in the United States. Um, so from between 1954 and the present, 2020, what you have is a period of about 65 years 
of government-enforced equality, meaning that the government has instituted laws and they are prepared to enforce those laws if people uh, refuse to obey those laws. Um, you also begin to see other groups of people, including women, including homosexuals, including Hispanics, including uh, a whole variety of people begin to become inspired by the civil rights movement that um, had brought this greater degree of equality for blacks, other groups are going to be inspired to fight for their equal rights as well. So the civil rights movement is not just about black and white race relations. It will trickle into other groups that also have been oppressed and persecuted throughout American history. Um, this idea of institutional racism um, however, doesn't end with the civil rights movement. You still see today uh, things um, that apply to institutional racism. Um, and we're going to cover those over the course of this class. Um, so what, again, what you see here um, over the course of this entire spectrum of 400 years, you see a country that um, began in with enslaving people and treating them no better than the livestock that was on farms. Um, you had this idea that was taught in schools and passed down in families uh, and, and where the idea that of black people were um, inferior. It was justified to mistreat them. It was justified to discriminate against them. And this idea of black oppression by the white race um, was entrenched in American history for literally hundreds of years. And that's something that is going to be uh, uh, take a long time to erase. That's why in 2020 we still have uh, intense racial tension in the United States because of this entire past. Is it getting better? Yeah. Uh, Barack Obama becomes the first president to become the first black president to become elected president. That is significant achievement. You have other successes within the black community um, that have proven that things are getting better. But then of course you have the last several years of the Trump administration, which uh, has proven to be kind of a, a, a reverse uh, of, uh, and has set back racial relations. Trump's own racism should be held accountable. And if anyone's interested to know more about that, I'm happy to justify some of the examples of Trump's racism over the course of not just his three years as president, but also going back to when he was younger. Uh, you have black incarceration where blacks are disproportionately put into jail at a, hot, a significantly higher rate than that of other races. And we kind of need to figure out as a society, why is that? Why is that? And that's some of the things that we're going to be diving into over the course of this class. All right, so that's the timeline that is really important to understand uh, about um, this next assignment. This next assignment is going to require you to do uh, and to read this uh, book chapter, uh, which is part of the first uh, part, of, uh, part of this larger assignment. It's the first of two parts. You need to read this book chapter. The questions are highlighted in red. You'll type your answers underneath them. Each question relates to the previous paragraph that's in the Word document. So as long as you're carefully reading each paragraph, you'll be able to easily find the answer um, in that paragraph. And if you're stuck on that, I encourage you to contact uh, um, your teacher and uh, inquire uh, a little bit more deeply as to and needing assistance for answering any of the questions that are on this worksheet. When you are done with uh, this document, um, and I think there is a total of 16 questions, uh, after completing the 16 questions, you are then to write a four paragraph essay that answers the following historical question. What impact did slavery have on US history and specifically black Americans? you'll then have to write a four paragraph essay. I'll be uploading another video to help you get through that four paragraph essay. But for now, that's all I have to talk about today. 
If you have any questions, it is imperative that you contact uh, me or your teacher to uh, um, better understand the questions that are being asked, the assignments that are being asked, um, and uh, I really encourage you to do that. Please don't try to hack your way through this uh, without contacting your teacher to find out um, what's going on. That's it. Be well, stay safe, stay healthy, and look forward to the next video.